Maybe. Says lie. <laughs> yeah, there we go. We're live! <laughs> so exciting! <laughs> and we just lost a viewer the second we go live. Well, you know, it happens. It, they'll, they'll come back. Welcome to the live stream. Yeah, we'll wait a couple of minutes before we start talking, but Trish says that she uh, may have ordered a cozy or three today from the High End Fixer Upper series. Uh, yes, because that, yes, that's the book that got chosen. I see what you did there, Trish. Hi, Derek Murphy. Hi, Derek. I haven't seen you pop up on my channel in the longest time. Welcome back. I haven't seen you. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm like, Derek. <laughs> like, it's like, hey, wait a second. I know you. You're like, I know that person. Hey, Lou. I, hey, did you get to finish the book? I know that you were rushing. Oh, all the little hearts are so cute. I the know, they're adorable. Hey, Miriam, how are you? I specifically gave this little guy a treat so he could go be by himself. <laughs> and then he picks up the treat and he's like, you're picking me up with the treat. He's like, yep, nope, we're doing both of them now. Hello, uh, Jenna. Oh, all the hearts and kisses. <laughs> he's like, he's like, she noticed I was missing. I'm like, yes, we noticed you. We know Derek. Derek's awesome. Everyone should go say hi to Derek. And we have Lucy. We have all our lovelies. I'm so excited to see the same faces pop up. Everyone, Joanna and Lady Gizmo's back. I don't even know you can do the wave emoji in the YouTube comment section live. I'm very impressed by that right now. <laughs> I've done the heart. I've done the little sad and smiley face. But I've, yeah, even the party. We got Bambi doing the party emojis. How is this happening? <laughs> I'm impressed. Hey, guys. How you doing? Everybody Aww. ready to start talking about some cozies? Oh, you got your cat. I got my dog. We got, like, the animal kingdom covered. <laughs> Yeah, we do. Oh, she's like, nope, I'm done with my lovin's. Oh, she's so cute, though. I mean, that's a perfect lead-in right there for this. For this yes, party. it is. Hey, Alex. This is so exciting. Welcome to our live stream. Oh, it's so cool to see the numbers go up. I'm blushing. This is so cool. <laughs> Look at all you guys being all awesome and stuff. I was going to say, should we introduce ourselves? Yeah, or you can go first. It's your channel. <laughs> oh, wow. That just sounded very official. This is my YouTube channel. Yeah. I'm Angela. This is Books Are My Heart, my channel. And my lovely, lovely co-host is Courtney. So welcome her to the channel. And just give her love and go follow and subscribe to her channel because we need to get her to the thousand, like, ASAP. <laughs> that needs to happen. So go show her some love. And now you can introduce yourself. <laughs> Hi, I am Courtney. I am from the channel Courtagonist, like antagonist and protagonist, but together with my name. Um, is that how you came up with it? I want to know now. <laughs> yes, that is. So, like, Aaron and I were thinking one night, we were talking about how, you know, I wanted to start my own YouTube channel. And he was, like, the big, like, person to be like, hey – you should, you should really do this. You'd be really good at it. And I was like, okay. And I started like throwing a whole bunch of different kinds of names out there. And I was like, I don't know, maybe something to do with like characters, like an antagonist or a protagonist. And he goes, well, what about courtagonist? I was like, your channel? I did not know this. I feel like I just got the inside behind the scenes scoop on this right now. Yeah. So he named my channel and I was like, oh my God, I love it. And so I wrote it down and with like a whole entire list of names and then for like a couple of days, I was like, no, I don't like that one. No, I don't like that one. And then I just kept coming back to Courtagonist. And so, yeah, I mostly review cozy mysteries and mysteries. And I read pretty much everything. But my main my main niche is uh, cozy mysteries. She, I, I, I've officially dubbed her. I don't know if you've heard me mention this in the last few live streams. I call her the queen of cozy mysteries because <laughs> I think she is the queen of cozies. I love them and I enjoy them. But like she is the cozy mystery queen of booktube. Like. That is her genre. So <laughs> this is, she needed, she needed to be a part of like a cozy mystery book club. We needed to make one just to like have her be a part of it. It had to, it just had to happen. 
And it was totally um, Angela's idea to start the Cozy Mystery Book Club. Like I had always thought about it, but I was like, I don't know if anybody would want to do it. And then she messaged me out of the middle of nowhere and was like, hey, so there's this thing that we could do. And I was like, that is a thing we could do. And then it sort of just came together. It's pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. I mean, 13 people are watching our faces right now. So, you know, that happens. I am. I'm. I feel like I learned so much about you right now. I, I've I've known you for how long, and I never knew how you got your channel name. I am. I mean, I knew Aaron was like the most supportive boyfriend ever. I mean, relationship goals. That is the. Like, that is you too. <laughs> I did not know he named your channel though. I feel like I'm learning so much about you right now. Oh yeah, he watches my videos, and then he'll tell me like, you know, you you do this a lot, or you say this word a lot. He goes, you might want to work on that, or he'll be like. You that that picture was really good. I liked the colors that you used. It's pretty awesome. That is too cute. And I'm seeing we got more people like hi. <laughs> people are hey. popping up. Hey. I'm doing that like awkward lean in. Just so if you guys ever see the top of my head, because I want to read your comments. <laughs> trying to read everybody. Okay, so we're about six minutes in. Do we want to? Do we want to get started talking about it? Would you like to kick it off? I mean, first of all, like first of all, we have to know in the comment section. Have you read Lending a Paw? So you got to tell us in the comment section if you've read it and if you like. Let it. us know if you guys um, have read it or are about to finish it or are excited to pick it up. Um, that would be that'd be really, really, really good to know. I mean, this will be a spoilery kind of review because I mean we're, we're talking about it but maybe it'll make you want to read it and love it and pick up the series I always feel like when it's a mystery book of any kind <laughs> I mean for romances like you have the guaranteed happily ever you know they're gonna end up together that's a given when it comes to mysteries you don't know who the killer is so if you don't want to be spoiled <laughs> it's very important that you're aware when there are spoilers so just putting that out there right now if we reveal the killer we're revealing the killer so yeah I love Lou. She says, yes, just finished it about 30 minutes ago. I, I like, does that mean you liked it? That it was yeah. just one of those, like, you had to finish it? <laughs> Looks like Trish and Alex really, really, really enjoyed it. Wow, five out of five stars. I just saw the Average Girl's Guide to Full Life, which I still think is, like, the best channel name. I love that name. I saw yeah. Bambi up there before. I'm like, I love, I love the names that you guys have. They're so creative. I love them. And Mad Hatter Reader, yes. I always see hers, and hers is one of my faves because Alice in Wonderland is, like, one of my all-time favorites. Yes. Okay, Eddie, seriously, best cat. I think he was he was the star of the book for me. He was not just a cat. He was a full-on character. Yes, Brie. That's what I heard in my mind every single time. Can we talk about that for a second? So yes, yes I, can. I, I was I was so fascinated by that. That she not only was she having conversations with the cat, but he was responding. Yes, and she assumed like this is what the cat meant. Like, like he's telling her this. Like that was just that was the best. I love how you have your own little cat. It's like <laughs> she's not a prop, but it's perfect time. Because like, I'm sitting on top of my yoga mat. And so she's just like sitting next to me, like. Pet me, love me. <laughs> See, even I, she's telling me what to do. And I agreed readily. See, I remember, so I went on Goodreads after I read the book. I The only time I went on Goodreads before was when I said I wanted to read the book. And so after I read it, I went on to read the reviews. And it was so funny when people, <laughs> people were commenting about the cat on Goodreads. That seemed to be one of the overarching themes of the comment section was talking about Eddie. And so I just saw Jenna mention the audio book. And then Nicole from Who Picked This Book, she talked to me earlier about she listened to it on audio <laughs> and how the narrator had to do like the cat noises. So I haven't heard the audio, but I'm kind of curious how that played out. Yeah, I kind of want to hear like, like what kind of like, I don't know, like pitch did the uh, did the person who's reading the book do? Like, did they go like, or did they go like, like, did you give like a little bit of attitude with it? Did they like, you know, whenever he was being sassy, it was like a sassy like, or like, what was it? Well, I also want to just point out the fact there's that one time, spoiler, there's a car accident of sorts, and we, you know, we can get into that later, but the cat has the dialogue where he's getting pushed around, and you have that weird overarching 
like I don't know how to I'm, I'm not good with the animal noises but it has an overarching sound I would have loved to have heard that as a narrator on audiobook I'm curious if it was good or not Jenna says that the narrator did a kind of deep meow with lots of attitude that really fits Eddie I, I couldn't agree more was it a male narrator or a female narrator because I think that might have an impact <laughs> that might have a huge impact like I don't know, having a cozy writ or written by a woman in the uh, point of view of a woman, but to be narrated by a male? Someone has to tell us who the narrator is now. Oh, oh female. female. <laughs> okay, good, good, just wondering. Yeah, I mean, we, we both had that same thought process of, this is gonna be interesting. I mean, I saw, um, oh, I can't think of her name. She was in this, I, the title of the movie is so terrible. It was like, Man Up. She has, she's really cute. Lake Bell, I just thought of it. She's in a movie where she's the narrator and she's the only female narrator and you learn about the industry and how it's so male dominated. So it's so, it's kind of nice to know there are female narrators who are succeeding and doing other books and genres and stuff. And that just sounded like a very big tangent digression, but just putting that no, out. No, seriously though, like it's, it's, it's interesting how that, how those things can correlate. So lending a paw, I have it right here. It is a the first in the Bookmobile Cat Mystery series, and it's by Lori Cass, and it follows Minnie, who is a librarian in the town of. I'm really horrible with towns. There's so many in my head. Chilson, Michigan, and she is basically trying to. I was like, I was trying to through her um, through her town in places where they wouldn't necessarily have the ability to get books and stories, which my teacher heart is like loving, loving that aspect of it. And her cat decides that he's going to follow along. And at the end of their very first day, he runs out of the bookmobile and he stumbles upon a dead body. And so it's a whole entire mystery of trying to figure out the who done it. I think Eddie is the real sleuth of this. I'm just going to throw that out there. Eddie is the one who found Stan's body. Eddie is the one who destroyed some of the like irrelevant clues that she was trying to put together. Eddie was running the show. I think this was Eddie's book. <laughs> I, I think it's my favorite. I really want to see Eddie grow as a character. Yes, I love that she found Eddie in the cemetery too. I grew up across the street from a cemetery, which sounds super depressing, but a cemetery was just normal to me. And so I very rarely see them referenced <laughs> as something common. Usually you have something with the vampire diaries where she's drawn to death and she hangs out in cemeteries. So it's kind of nice to see a cemetery normalized, but it was so cute she found him there. Yes, he's the sleuth. He's He's drawn to things. I love that comment. Yes, sorry. <laughs> I love that it did feel like Michigan, um, Average Girl's Guide, she was talking about how it felt like home. I love it whenever the author can actually make it feel like it is the place that it is. That they're not just making it up or looking on Google for what it looks like and feels like. I just, <laughs> I wanted Steven to die. <laughs> that, yeah. I was hoping he was the killer at one point when he was talking. So did I. Like, I thought he was just a douchebag is what I thought. Like, I wanted to punch him in the face. I was like, you were so cocky and rude and disrespectful. <sighs> hey, Nicole. Welcome. I love Nicole. Everyone should be following her. She's my best friend. <laughs> I love her. Fantastic. I love her face as well. I was like, you're sorry you're late. Like, you're just welcome anytime. Yes, everyone feel free to just join in at any point in time for the Cozy Mystery Love. Brie, douche lord. I was hoping, I was really hoping he was going to be the killer because then he could justify the evil actions. I was actually <laughs> thinking that in my head. I was yeah, like, you're like, okay, yeah, like here's his evil essence like coming out and, you know, he's the killer and that makes sense. <sighs> That's what I, especially with the people who are her next door neighbors, I thought this was a dead giveaway at one point when she said to them, or they said to her after she recommended a book, oh, we don't like to read. I'm thinking, you're going to be the killer. <laughs> like, that was my first thought. Yeah. I think that she set them up right away to be the killer. That was, yeah. my, that was my instinct. 
And, and I loved how many red herrings there were because you're trying to figure out like, oh, is it the guy who is eating in the restaurant? Like the one that was like very, very sketchy? Or is it the, um, or is it the, I thought that maybe it was Steven. And then, I don't know, there was like so many different things that I was like, hmm. Did you guys know who the killer was? Courtney and I were talking about this when we were trying to set things up. We were curious if you knew who the killer was because we felt it was very difficult to tell. <laughs> we didn't. Neither yeah. of us got it. Normally, I'm pretty good at being able to to figure out the who done it, but sometimes, but in this one, I feel like it came out very uh, left left field. So I wasn't I wasn't quite sure like who was going to be the killer. I, I, we can, I mean, we can start off talking about the killer, can't we? I mean, we can just go for this right now. Yeah, we totally. <laughs> we were talking about this. And so when she did the name change, I was, I had, I mean, there was no way for me to guess that this person had their name changed. That was just total game changer. Did not see that one coming. I don't think you could see that one coming. So I had no idea who the killer was going to be. I really thought it was going to be Steven or what, like the people on the boat who didn't like reading because of their personalities. I thought that was how it was being set up. So I did not guess this one. And I, was yeah. very, <laughs> and I didn't even blame myself. Usually I get mad if I can't figure it out. I'm like, oh, I should have picked up on that. Oh, my writer instincts are off or something. This one, I did not have a clue. Just mm -mm. Mad Hatted Reader says there were so many red herrings. Once the killer was revealed, the one that one sentence a few <laughs> chapters ago made much more sense. So <laughs> I actually had this moment when I read that sentence and I did this evil voice, like one of those reveals, like dun, dun, dun. Like that was the moment, that one sentence. I highlighted it, I emailed it to myself. It was that one sentence when the name was revealed. <laughs> yeah. It, I, I, oh, I really did have like that mental soundtrack going in my head going, yep, this is the, this is it. <laughs> did all not see that one. All of my chat went away. Oh, there it is. Yes, there it is. Okay, good. Phew. I thought I just lost y'all. Hey, Dana. How are you? Welcome. Welcome to the live stream discussion. We're so happy you joined us. There are so many red herrings. There really, really were. <laughs> I had trouble with the red herrings keeping track of who, who, whose storyline kind of went where, because I thought there were a lot of variables to keep track of as the mystery <laughs> kept unfolding. And I was just following Eddie to see where he was gonna run next, because I thought that would be a good indicator as well. Oh my goodness, we have the author. This is so amazing. Hey, Lori, how are you? Thank you so much for coming by. Do you want us to call you Janet or Lori? I don't know which one you would prefer. I'm kind of curious now. This has nothing to do with the story. How did you decide your pen name? Because usually people incorporate the same letters. So I'd like to know how the pen name came about. Yes, that would be beautiful. Both names are, <laughs> both of them are stunning. I mean, both of them. Yeah, both of them would be fantastic pen names. She says she doesn't. She, she's cool with either Janet or Lori. See, I have a thing. So, as a reader, I always imagine the writer as their published name. It's a problem. So, when you tell me your real name, it's hard to differentiate and compartmentalize and be like, oh, writer versus real person. <laughs> it's hard for me. So, I kind of just be like, Lori. Dana says, when Minnie and Tucker were on their date and talked about Kyle's broken finger, she knew. See? Why didn't I pick up on that? See, like, to me, I was just, part of me was like, okay, you know, this is the first book. We're introducing all of the main characters. We're doing all of this different kinds of stuff. And so when um, Kyle was, you know, introduced as his character, I was like, oh, okay, yeah, this is just going to be this guy. And maybe he'll, you know, fall in love with Minnie's best friend. And maybe that could be a thing. Like, that's where my mind went. Totally did not go to, this could be the dude. Well, I was also focused on the date itself. So that was the other factor. When they kept having their date interrupted, I, I mean, that is the worst first date in history. And you can kind of see that, you can kind of see that happening in a small town where you know everybody and you can't really escape your friends. I mean, it's hard. I mean, you probably wouldn't want to, but when you want some private time, I thought that was really funny. So I was focusing on other elements. It's almost as if that snuck in under the radar. I don't mm -hmm. know if anyone else felt that way as well. No, I totally, I totally agree. 
did anyone else like dream dream about that bookmobile like you just you wanted it in your life Dana you guys work magic got the author of the book of the month on twice in a row <laughs> I think I mean we should give like Courtney applause for that one because she I mean you, that was you. You you were like, I'm gonna invite her. I am going. I mean, that was initiative. That was confidence. The yeah. worst they can say is no, and I love getting to know everybody and everything. <laughs> I love everybody and everything. That is the best attitude to have in the entire world. Uh, Lori says my first series was as Laura Alden, and I thought I should have a similar name, so I became Lori. Laura was because I've always liked that name. Jacqueline said that she had, oh, go ahead. No, she named herself after her character. I actually was thinking of doing something very similar. So it's kind of funny. It's really nice to see that. <laughs> Jacqueline said, I had absolutely no idea it was Kyle because he was such a small character and we got no uh, info on other than the lie about his finger. Yeah, it, it, it was hard to like, try and figure out what was going on because we didn't really know much more about his background or, or anything like that. <laughs> Jenna, it was so funny how everyone interrupted the date. I, w I mean, what do you do with that? Because you're not really going to get the date experience. And so I wasn't sure which way that was going to go. But when he kissed her goodnight, I'm thinking, okay, it was a good date. Did not see that one coming either. There was a lot of unpredictability in this book for me. I did not know what was going on. <laughs> no, I don't know if that was anyone else felt that way. But it was hard to predict, which is kind of interesting. Brie was like, uh, the date was so cringe. Yeah, I had secondhand embarrassment for many. Like, I felt like, I was like, oh, I'm so sorry, girl. I'm so sorry. It reminded me, so this is maybe my own personal, like, interpretation. It reminded me of when you're in high school or something, or when you're really young and you get all your friends nearby because you're in the same, you know, area or something. It did not feel like the date that two grown people in their 30s should have been having. And I think that's what made it awkward for me. It was like everyone was kind of forcing them into a different kind of date. And it was, and again, this is why I was on details. This is why I was on But I mean, that's sort of what happens when you go back to a small town where everyone knows everyone. There is no, uh, there is no, they're, they're breaking down that fourth wall. Every, your business is everyone's business, which I feel like really, really was portrayed well with that. Oh, no, I think it really captured it, but it did, it did, I, I mean, I always thought I came from a small town and it's not really a small town. And so when you get to see the small towns in action, totally different, very different. And <laughs> you want to volunteer on the bookmobile. <laughs> yes. Seriously, my, one of my best friends and I, we have always talked about, owning our own bookstore or or a bookmobile and I was just like this one was like I was like yes this would be fantastic to have <laughs> she laughed all the way through the writing of that first date scene yes I can see that I like the whole entire time I was like oh oh come on guys come on just just leave them alone let them ha let them have their date so I'm kind of curious because, I mean, we have the source here. How did you come up with the worst first date in literary history? I mean, this is this is a terrible first date. It ends well. They kiss goodnight. They're, they're going to have the second date. All's well in, <laughs> in Minnie's world, but it was still just so awkward. But, I mean, you wanted it to be that, right? I mean, I'm curious how you came up with the most awkward date ever because if that was me, I would not know what to do in Minnie's situation. I would just be sitting there like, this is going to end sometime soon. I would just not know what to do. I like how Jacqueline says that she thought that it was kind of cute, that he kind of gets a look into her life and how important she is to the community. I think it m actually made him like her more. I can totally see that. Like you see that she's actually a real person. She can't put on a fake persona like people do most on most real first dates. Um, I like that. I like that a lot. I agree with that. I, I mean, again... <laughs> If you watch my channel or you've been paying attention to some of the things I've been talking about, I love the romance genre. So I always pay attention to relationships. And I, I do agree with that. He did get more of an insight. And I think this made it more realistic as well. It didn't feel like that polished insta-love relationship at all. It definitely gave it a realism that probably a lot of other stories lack.
Mm-hmm. I'm looking through it. I just saw, I love that it was so awkward. Everybody seems to like the fact that these people are very uncomfortable. <laughs> this is funny. What did you say you were looking for? Oh, I was just, I'm just looking for like more things. Cause like I, I actually read it on e-reader too. And I actually had whole highlighted sections. It was pretty awesome. But of course it's not next to me. Jacqueline, that was your favorite scene in the entire book. And this is the scene without Eddie. He didn't even get to meet Eddie. That would have been the best insight into her life, meeting Eddie. See, but I think, like, behind me, I have Tailing a Tabby. I have Borrowed Crime. And I have Pouncing on Murder. So I'm pretty sure there might be some more time for him to meet Eddie. <laughs> you need to make your characters suffer. What's the, the famous quote by Stephen King? You need to set the monsters loose on your characters. You set the monster of the worst first date onto your characters. And that would be one of my worst nightmares. I mean, welcome to 21st century dating. Trish, I totally, totally loved the friendship between Minnie and Kristen. Like, I love that it has spanned so much time. And because for me, both of my best friends, I have known since I was 12. So we have actually been best friends for 16, 17 years now. And to see a friendship like that really last is, is I liked that a lot. Got distracted. So I'm gonna give you guys a little caveat. I've been waiting to buy Hamilton tickets. I've been in queue forever. <laughs> and so my little line just moved and I was so excited. I've been waiting for my Hamilton tickets. So maybe at some point I'll have to bow out for like five minutes to buy these tickets. But my little line has been- yeah, um, because yeah. Hamilton tickets are, are soups important. <laughs> I was gonna say, I think if anybody could understand, I, I would be this audience, and I know you love musicals, so. Yes. Well, I actually taught US, or when I taught fifth grade, I actually used the Hamilton soundtrack to reiterate some of the standards that I taught. So my <laughs> students actually read, or my students actually sang and danced around my classroom to Hamilton, the, the kid-friendly, I made a kid-friendly playlist. Oh my gosh, that's so cute. Well, Hamilton has come, I live in DC, for those of you who don't know, I'm getting my PhD at American University. So I live in the heart of DC and Hamilton is coming to the Kennedy Center and I've been waiting for this for probably like a year. <laughs> and so I had this date marked on my calendar. So this morning at like eight, eight o'clock or something, I opened up my window and then they put me in queue at 10 o'clock and I am, I am 48,275. And so now I am, 14,682, so the number is working down, but it's been a very long waiting period right now. So this was a big tangent digression and I apologize. But like, Hey, that's what book club's all about, to be able to talk about <laughs> anything and everything and splashes of books and, and fun things. <laughs> you guys are so cute. You're like, oh, thank you. Your preemptive forgiveness means a lot to me. But I mean, who doesn't want to go see Hamilton? At this point, you know, I've also been waiting a long time to get these tickets. I'm like determined. Uh, Jacqueline says, I love that their friendship isn't super sentimental, that they are comfortable completely making fun of each other. I couldn't agree more because not every friendship is like 100% perfect. They pick on each other and like, different things like that. They bring each other up, but then they also bring each other down to the level that they need to be. Oh, bye, Ambi. Oh, thank you for joining us. We really appreciate you stopping by. And I'm looking at the comments. Best teacher. You really are a really great teacher. I do miss my kids. I don't get to, I'm not, I'm not actually in the classroom anymore, but I do miss my kids. They are the best. I have to agree. I think French, I think Cozy Mysteries, and I think we talked about this at one point, the friendships and the secondary characters matter so much. And mm -hmm. I think it's really important to really give them <laughs> their own sort of voices and dynamics and really make them well developed. And so it's, I think it's important to have that in the Cozy Mystery, especially. And it's nice to see, again, a different type of friendship and see it done well. And so I was really excited when I read that. 
I don't know how anybody else felt about the relationships. With, she had her mother. She had, <laughs> she had the, there was the aunt. I don't want to mispronounce yes. it. Yes, there was, yeah, she had her aunt. I wish that I, I know, and I know that since this was the first one in the series that, you know, we don't get a lot of, of depth and background knowledge, but I want to know more of um, the relationship with the mom. And I want to know more about, about her aunt, because I feel like we didn't, we, we only touched, you know, dipped a toe into the, the, the ocean of the bookmobile cat mystery series. Well, I didn't know what was going on with the aunt. I wasn't sure she was going to be a part of this murder mystery. I mean, I knew she wasn't going to be our murderer. At least I was hoping she wasn't going to be, because that would be a real wrench in the story if the family member was a part of this. Um, I really can't think of a cozy mystery where the sister, or aunt, or mother did it. That's kind of hard for me to think of offhand. But <laughs> her storyline, it was, it was important, though, because that helped get her help get many, pardon me, it helped get many invested in doing being a sleuth. And especially with the friend at the library and her aunt, it kind of was, the, that's her motivation. So she was an important character to have. It was, she was a very, very important character to have. Um, the whiteboard that her mom had her write on. Yes, especially like, what cracks me up is that it was, she's living in a small town and even her mom's like, small towns can be dangerous, Minnie. You need to write on that whiteboard where you're going and when you'll be back. And then in the end, that actually made it. I love those little details. <laughs> those make me so happy because I am very detail oriented. And so things that come back around and you kind of get that satisfaction of going, I remember reading this. This is so funny. Like I, this is, you feel included almost. And it gives the narrative kind of a clean finish of sorts. So I really liked that detail. That made me happy. Yeah. Uh, we, we kind of touched on Eddie. So does everyone want to go buy a cat now? I mean, how do you guys feel about Eddie? <laughs> Eddie was fantastic. Oh, Lori says that her editor is always pushing her for more Aunt Frances to be more involved. I couldn't agree more. I loved how sassy she was and that, that her whole entire boarding house was to like get people together. Like that cracked me up and that she was so salty that the, uh, the two couples that she was talking about, they weren't going together the way she wanted them to go together. I felt like she really was, <laughs> this is one of those writer pieces of advice, how every character thinks they're the main character in your story. She really did feel like a main character. Like she thought it was her story. <laughs> and so that kind of read that way to me. Like she thought she was the main character. I mean, then she was fully developed and I loved her. So it worked well, I liked it. She deserves a spinoff maybe. Give her, maybe there's a murder mystery and she gets her point of view when she's doing the bed and breakfast. What do you? She's the town shipper, Nicole. <laughs> what was the old um, reality TV show? It was Million Dollar Matchmaker. Well, she's the bed and breakfast matchmaker. You got to give her a title. Yep. Yep. So, okay. I, I have my dog. He is a Maltese. He has, he has hair. He does not have fur. He is hypoallergenic. I am allergic to cats. So I just saw the comment. And I had to live vicariously reading because as much as I think they're beautiful, I can't have a cat. <laughs> At least not one that has fur. If it has hair, like a Persian or something, it'd be okay. But cats with fur, no, no. Yeah. yeah. That's <laughs> I mean, I'm curious if anybody else had to, you know, maybe you can't have pets in your apartment building or something. But Eddie, for me, is out of reach. And that also, there's you this thing of seriously. The scene where the little girl takes the cat hair and puts it on her shirt because she wants Eddie with her all the time. It was such a cute scene. And I'm thinking in the back of my head, oh my goodness, I would be sneezing my head off. My eyes would be crying. Like I could never do that. But it was such a cute scene. <laughs> I couldn't even, I wanted to appreciate it. I wanted to appreciate it so much. It was so cute. And I'm like, I could never do that. Oh, I'm so jealous. That little girl, like that made my heart swell so big when she was like, I'll bring Eddie to come and see you. It was, it was amazing. I was. <laughs> I, I love the comment. Allergic to cats. You'll have to read the next book. I will read the next book. Cause I'm curious. I was wondering how that was going to go. I'm all, I was, I was also waiting for Steven to find out there was a cat on board, the bookmobile. I was waiting for that to happen. So I'm hoping that comes up in the second book because I'm curious. 
Say uh, someone. Okay. Anything to void for Mad Hatter. I do like that Eddie's talking wasn't just meows. I could totally picture the more. Do you like my, my You should be doing narrations. I heard you do that earlier and I'm like, she should be doing, she should be doing her own audiobooks. Yeah, yeah, totally. I'm not the only person though. You guys are making, making me feel better in the comments <laughs> because when I was reading the book, I was thinking, oh, this is so cute, but like this could never happen for me. Like if I went in the bookmobile, Anywhere a cat's been for a significant period of time and they've kind of got their scent or put their hair down or whatever, or fur down, excuse me, I, it, I, it wouldn't happen. And so I wouldn't be able to enjoy the bookmobile. <laughs> and so, I, I mean, it's nice to know I'm not the only one. I felt badly reading that going, I wouldn't get to enjoy this experience. I've also never seen a bookmobile. <laughs> have you seen one? I have seen one once when I was in, I think I was in like fourth or fifth grade the apartment complex that we lived in, what's awesome is um, the, it was my public library actually purchased a bookmobile to send to the lower um, income houses. And, and it, it was awesome. They'd give you, you, they'd write down what books you took and then they'd come back a week or two later. It was awesome. I was, see, I ended up going on Google and then I was on YouTube and and someone, I don't know why someone did this, but there's a video, it's I think 10 seconds and you just see the bookmobile go by and I was thinking, I wanted to see the inside of the bookmobile, thank you very much for this little impromptu video, but I wanted a tour and so I've never seen one in real life. I mean, again, I live in the middle of the city, so there's really no need to have a bookmobile, quote unquote. Um, but here in Oklahoma, we need bookmobiles because... Oklahoma, there's there's a lot of land. I love how she I love how she said it took a couple of bottles of wine to figure out how to spell Eddie's vocalization. I mean, it was I I thought it was unique, but I understood exactly what you were referring to. So oh, yeah. it worked really well. I mean, those two bottles of what did you say? A few or a couple? Well, they worked. They were great inspiration. It worked out perfectly. I also loved how there was Janet Ivanovich on the bookmobile. I was really curious how she made it onto the bookmobile because I wanted to know what the criteria was for something. I was thinking it had to be all kind of classics or very general books, but Janet Ivanovich is on there. And so I was very happy reading it. I read almost every Janet Ivanovich book. I, I love her. Stephanie Plum is Stephanie, yeah, Stephanie is Plum is awesome. Hello, the insatiable bookie. How are you? Uh, Jacqueline, there is one in the county next over, so I can't use it. It caters to all of the outlying towns of L.A. County. Yeah, so uh, Tulsa is where I grew up, and it had, you know, we had our main Tulsa part, but there are many different counties that are technically Tulsa counties, but they're within it, not within, like, the area of where there's a library, so they had the, the bookmobile. Uh, she, when she was a kid, there was a bookmobile in their area, and they seemed to be popular in different parts of the country. Oh, I love the idea of a bookmobile. I've just never seen one. So I felt like I had this very, I, I, I got to, I mean, it was a totally different reading experience for me because I'm, I've never <laughs> I've never been on a bookmobile. I've never seen one. I don't have a cat. <laughs> I mean, it was just a very different experience. Although I will, I will admit it did give me some serious Aurora Tea Garden vibes because she's the librarian, she's the sleuth, it's a small town. So it did remind me of Aurora Tea Garden, and I love Aurora Tea Garden, so I was okay with that. He says Ohio has a lot. There are two bookmobile manufacturers there. Wow. They, they make enough for manufacturing. That's See, awesome. I want to go hunt, a, I wanna go hunt down a bookmobile. To I want to be like... Bookmobiles in Oklahoma because I haven't seen one in a really, really long time. Dana, Wichita could probably use one. I've never heard one before this book. I heard on the news that Kansas was shutting down a bunch of libraries in the county. Yeah, my whole entire dad's side of the family actually lives in Wichita. My grandmother lives there and everything, and I can I can most definitely see that, Dana. Miriam, I've always lived in cities, but there is also a lot of land in Quebec where I live. I have no idea if it exists here, but it should. It totally should. Everybody should have the ability to be able to get a book. 
So I do have a question. <laughs> this has nothing to do with the book. Or, um, this has to do with the bookmobile. How do you return books? Is it on the bookmobile to come back to the same locations so that you can return? Yeah. So what they do is like they, they they put out a schedule and then they say, you know, throughout the book, she was like, okay, I'll be back in two weeks. And it's like a, that's what they get. And then they can keep the book as long as they want. And then they return it later. So I will admit, my this was my favorite thing about the bookmobile. When she was calling and it was just her, nobody cared. They wanted books and a cat. They didn't just want books. They wanted books and a cat. <laughs> and it had to be Eddie. It couldn't just be any cat. It had to be Eddie. It had to be Eddie. Well, I mean, I would have demanded Eddie, too. Oh, oh yes. Max is joining me again. <laughs> the book, I got to a point where I had to find a bookmobile to ride. The closest one was in northern Indiana. That's amazing. I would want to, I mean, I feel like we need to take a trip some here. I need to figure out where, where my closest book on would be because right. I'm curious. You really did pique my interest here. And yes, Aurora Tea Garden. I just saw Brie, um, Brie posted that. Aurora Tea Garden, that's one of my all-time favorite cozies. So if you if you reference Aurora, if you sound like Aurora, I'm going to be happy. Charlize, Charlize Harris, or Charlene Harris, True Blood, Aurora Tea Garden. She's a good writer. Miriam, no, not every cat would cooperate like that. So, like, Tom, my Tom cat, um, he's black and white, huge cat. He would probably be totally chill in that. Cleo, on the other hand, my black cat over here, mm -mm, nope, she's too prissy. She's not all about that that life of, of people and everything like that. Nope. <laughs> Bookmobile vlog. I think that would get so many views. People would be so curious to find out about the bookmobile. They'd want to see the vlog. That would be an epic booktube video. And I don't think that currently exists because I was trying to find it earlier. So yep. if someone's that, close by, vlog. <laughs> that could be a thing. That could be a thing that could most definitely happen. That would be a lot of fun. I mean, Eddie, I, <laughs> I just saw the not every cat comment. Um, I really loved Eddie. I mean, I think that was kind of a cute touch to have the cat on the bookmobile. I wouldn't have thought of that because, again, I'm allergic to cats. <laughs> so, but I thought it was really cute how he was there for the kids because if you're a kid and you, you know, you're still getting used to books, it's kind of like a nice way to get you in the door almost of, oh, there's a cute cat and there's books. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was kind of a nice little segue. And I liked the conversation with the little girl with the princess. I liked the girl again with the sweater putting the cat hair on her. It was really cute. Yeah, I, I really, really enjoyed those those different kinds of aspects and little tidbits. Booktuber bookmobile compilation video. <gasps> Nicole. Yas. That's so cute. <laughs> oh, so, we, so people do own cats. So is there something else we want to talk about directly about the book? Or are we just going to keep talking about the bookmobile? We can just, you know, keep talking about Eddie. Um, so... I love that there are so many different um, avenues that this book leaves open for more interpretation. So like the the guy that she started dating and then Kristen and then like I can just see books that sort of fall open around those specific characters because I wanted to know more. There were so many different characters that were introduced. Sometimes it was hard for me to keep up with all of them. And so I'm hoping that the ones that were all mentioned, we get to know more about and it can seem more like a community and um, all of that fun stuff. What did you guys think? I want the booktuber vlogs. <laughs> I'm reading the comment section. Um, the fictional Eddie is very... Similar to the real Eddie, is that the is that There's the kitty cat that at the back of your book? Is that the kitty cat right here? Oh. So I I love Frasier. This is one of my all time favorite television shows. Frasier, I have seen every episode multiple <laughs> multiple times, and the dog's name is Eddie. And so I kept thinking of Eddie the dog on Frasier, and so it was kind of funny for me I loved I loved how you're talking about the name Eddie and how it was such a it was a good guy name and it kind of is I thought that was really cute and now that we have confirmation that is Eddie love this see and I keep thinking about like if I want to get Maggie an animal in my book I don't know 
I liked when Minnie was tied, locked up, and her thought process. Like, I have so many things I'm going to see. <laughs> like out of your type of logic. <laughs> yes. You liked it when she was tied up. So, that was really funny. I was not expecting someone to be like, when she was a hostage. That was funny. But I really liked that she didn't, like, like, I feel like that was legit how she reacted. Like, she's not just going to sit there and wait for someone to rescue her. She's going to rescue her own self. I know. It was a really good passage, but it was just so funny that we were like, I liked it when she was tied up. It was just a great lead. I mean, it, I thought it was funny when she, I mean, I thought it was funny when she did work her way through. And I'm, this is not like the, I mean, I'm try, I don't know how to phrase this without sounding like bad. Um, when she said the sobs have finally stopped. I'm thinking, oh yeah, that's, that's accurate. Yep. You had mentioned the sobbing. And so mm -hmm. I, that was, it caught my attention because I'm like relatable, but at the same time, I don't want to sound like I was enjoying her sobbing. But, but I, no, it was just, it, you, you were like, yeah, that's how it would happen. Trish, she goes, my husband has been given gentle reminders that my B day will involve books. Aaron knows that everything is involving books. Like anytime we even go near uh, Barnes and Noble, he's like, hey, babe, do you, do you need to go to the bookstore? Need? Not necessarily. Want? Always. Uh, see, you, you really do. I mean, I am dubbing you two relationship goals. You two are really the idealistic couple. <laughs> Love he's, it. He's pretty fantastic. I'm lucky to have him. Is he still in the room? Because I'm like, hi, Aaron. Oh, yeah. No, he's over there playing. He's waving. He doesn't want to interrupt. The best birthdays involve books. Yes. They really do. Oh, bye, Jacqueline. I hope you have a good dinner. It was so nice to have you come by. Yes. Okay. Seriously. At least she had a real woman's body. Like those ones that are like, oh, I can fit my body through a clothes hanger. And then like, I'm over here a size 10 and I'm like, nah. And my, my boobs would get in the way and it would just be like everywhere. <laughs> well, what was the little hand motion again? Everywhere. <laughs> I love the way you're like, everywhere. No, I mean, I also appreciated that um, it wasn't as if she, everything was flawless and easy. I mean, I was I was watching, it was kind of a satirical um, YouTube video. I think, oh, what's her channel name? El Elias? Elias? She does the um, video vlog, the video diaries, the video vlogs, video essays. Mm -hmm. um, she has, I think, 200,000 subscribers. She's a big YouTuber whose name I can't remember off the top of my head. And so... She was talking about this fake kind of take on Fifty Shades or Twilight where she's saying, the character, my skin is so pale, which is why everyone thinks I'm so odd in the way she put it off. I'm like, yeah, that's what people do. They try and play the positives as negatives. And so it's kind of nice to just have a realism for a change and have it be kind of celebrated and yes. normalized and relatable. And that's what it should be. I mean, I know that we we read these things for an escape, but we also want to be able to put ourselves in the in the heroine or the hero's body. <laughs> you guys are cracking me up. Your hubby asks you. My hubby tries to get my attention on something else so I don't see the Barnes and Noble. <laughs> I love this. We're we're making the we're making the author happy. We're, we're cracking her up. That is that is putting the biggest smile on my face. Like when you can like, make the author. I mean, <laughs> Dana, um, that sounds so good. Such a good date. <laughs> I just read Nicole's comment. I love <laughs> Nicole. <laughs> that extra, that extra muffin or that extra uh, latte with extra foam would get you killed, or me. It would get me killed. It's like, damn it, why did I eat that? Because it tasted good. Because <laughs> it tasted good. I. <laughs> I so I had my comprehensive written exams last week and so I gave myself free range I'm like I don't care what I eat as long as I eat something <laughs> and so I gave myself free range to be as bad as possible so now I'm trying to get back into being healthy drinking my water and everything else it, it's a process it's I actually easy. just went uh vegan so that's been a change Trish, I can't wait to go to Barnes & Noble. We have chapters in Canada, but the selection isn't as great. I've always wanted to visit a chapters. I've always wanted to go to Canada, but yeah. Hey, Lizzie, how are you? We're just talking about, you know, Linda Nepal and all that fun stuff. Well, this conversation has absolutely no narrative. We are all over the place. Yeah, we are all over the place. It's, you know, 
it happens. It happens. Dana. Yeah, cozy mystery love and fun. So that's, you know, if you want to have cozy mystery fun, we're here to, we're here to talk about it. <laughs> Dana, oh, always no. grateful for my small boobs. Her thoughts while trying to squeeze her butt made me laugh. Right? I was like, I wonder what that's like, having small boobs. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would, I would. That's funny. <laughs> I just lay myself. I love how the women are all like, yep, yeah, this this is real. This would happen. I love how all the women are like, yep. Hello, Lon Gnome. How are you? But I'm glad that you stopped by. It's okay that you missed it. We're still talking. Probably not about stuff that you want to talk about because you're a dude. But I am so happy you're here. Well, someone just gave us a thumbs down. I just saw that pop up. So I guess no, not everybody likes this conversation, but that is okay because I am loving it. You know what? It's a judgy free zone. You sound like Megs from Scene of the Climb. Seriously. Yes, 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 I do. Uh, let's see. Oh, thank you for offering to let me stay with you, Trish. My imagination is not that good. <laughs> oh my God, that's Nicole and I, we've come up with a great way of coping with any thumbs down. So we came up this with the Harry Potter reference. There's a troll in the dungeon. So every time there's a thumbs down, we're like, there's a troll in the dungeon. Yeah. <laughs> that's how we cope with this. That is fantastic. I, I, I ignore the people that, that might not like my face. Well, I mean, cause I, I, I'm yeah, a very persistent, very real troll. It was really inappropriate and really bad and uncomfortable. And so that was when the There's a Troll in the Dungeon came about because there was an incident. There was something that prompted it. But, you know, focus on the love, focus on the positivity, the people who want to talk about cozy mysteries. This is why we're here, not the trolls in the dungeon. As much as I love Harry Potter, we're just going to ignore the trolls. We're just going to ignore them. So does anybody have any questions for our author? Um, I know that she's got, she's working and things like that. So I don't want to keep her for forever and a day. So does anybody have any questions about it or, or anything like that? Oh, I love your face too, Trish. Aw. You're one of my favorite. I people. love how you say that. That's like your tag. I love that. It's your catchphrase. I love your face. In the front butt. <laughs> What did I miss? <laughs> what did I miss? She said, oh my God, I wanted to punch that guy in the front butt. <laughs> I didn't see the comment. I always have to lean in. So I have super bad eyesight. So I have that, um, they're progressive. So they're like the bifocal. So we have the distance and then the nearsighted. So I always have to lean in. So I missed that comment. <laughs> yes, Nicole is one of my best. Like Nicole's my best friend. Like I love her. She was like, I've got this. We're going to get rid of this guy. <laughs> Lori says, thanks for inviting me. I have to leave in a minute as I need to get a little more writing done tonight. You two are hilarious, and I'm so glad you chose my book. Thanks again. Thank you for stopping by, and it's nice to see you writing. Oh <laughs> That's like, so encouraging. I'm so happy that you answered my Facebook message. <laughs> I was so nervous. I was like, I'm I'm messaging an, uh, an author. I'm a lowly, like, reader what is she gonna say and then she said yes and i was like oh goodness oh no it's so i mean it's so great that you're able <laughs> to do stuff like that i mean i'm very i think you guys see the best part of me where i get to be outgoing because i'm talking about books which i love but i'm usually very very quiet so i think it's great when you're like i'm gonna message this person and i'm gonna take a chance and she is so sweet and i mean it's <laughs> so nice to see the comments i love getting the inside behind the scenes it makes it you know it feels so special it gives us a whole different experience she said the houseboat came about because for a while she had a mystery idea that centered on a houseboat Ooh. i felt like this book was more character driven than plot driven i enjoyed it but i don't think the whodunit was the driving force in the story i can see that but i think that that's that that is a lot of ways in um cozy mysteries in general the first book is normally character driven so that you fall in love with the characters Dana says that Dan is from Michigan, so she loved reading about all of the Michigan scenery and details like that. I really enjoyed that, too. 
I when she, I love how the guy the guy goes, you don't have a cat, and then all of a sudden there's the cat. I mean, you can see like, that. Come at me, bro. Tell me what I have and what I don't have. I really did think some of it played like a movie almost because it had that kind of clean cut nature where it had a visual element to it. It wasn't just you as a reader; you could actually visualize the the scene itself. So I do think it would translate to another medium as well. I like that Lizzie says that her mom or that her, uh, her mom's name is is Francis, and so she actually the aunt Francis actually reminded her a lot of her mom. It's so much fun when you see your name or someone's name that you know, and it, I don't know if anyone else gets really kind of excited when they see their own name in a text. I'm like going, "Oh my gosh, that's so cool! It's kind of fun." Brie, when she, what about when she fell off the houseboat? I died because that is something I would have done. I am the biggest klutz ever. I fall upstairs and it's just, it's hilarious. Everybody's going by so fast. I know. That's why when I was talking about the cat, I was still, I was commenting. I was replying to one of the other comments. <laughs> it's hard to keep track. Oh, Nat, I'll take you to Michigan court. In the summer, it's amazing. Yes, please. Wait, who mispronounced what? Uh, YouTube keeps pushing me down. I'm like, no, I want to go up. So I feel like I'm missing stuff right now. Yeah, she said, Michiganders, my father-in-law just told me that the audio narrator mispronounced Mackinac Island. Not her fault. <laughs> yeah, you can't help some people's accents. You can't help it. Well, you and I were both saying aunt differently. <laughs> yeah, I say aunt and you say aunt. It's just I how play different time zones and I have to be very specific when I'm posting information. And, and like, even here in Oklahoma, I'm considered not having really an an Oklahoma accent. Like I'm looked at like, are you really from Oklahoma? Because you talk to my mom and it's, Hey y'all, how you doing? What you doing? And that's just not me. It was so funny. <laughs> Cause I don't like the phrase you guys. I don't like that phrase. I'll say y'all. And people always look at me funny when I say y'all because it doesn't sound natural for me at all. But I think it sounds better than, oh hey you guys, or I think it has a better flow <laughs> to it. Exactly. Some I mean, some of us in the Midwest, we we have some things. Uh I don't say wicked. I mean, I'm from Massachusetts. I don't think I've said wicked at all tonight, but I mean things are wicked awesome. This is a wicked awesome book. Yeah. Uh, he was so forceful with his interrogation of her. You don't have a cat. You were just spying. And she's like, um, I'm, yeah, she was, but back up. Here's my cat. This is what Eddie was. Okay. Eddie was not just a side character. Eddie was pivotal to the plot. He really, really was. Not only did he find the body, he was pivotal in dialogue scenes. He was pivotal in like getting to know characters. This cat was very important. The title of this book was very, it was, it was right on, it was. It yes, was on it was. It was perfect. Nat, it's Mac in awe. <laughs> Thanks, Nat. I appreciate you. Aw, bye, Lori, a.k.a. Janet. <laughs> Lizzie, yes, see, growing up in Oklahoma, we said ain't for aunt. Ain't, ain't. I was watching, um, what was it? I think it was Monk, and there were, there were sisters, there were twins, but they, were grew up, they grew up separately on other sides. And so that was the key differentiating factor for him to figure out which twin it was, the aunt versus aunt. So mm -hmm. it is important, <laughs> apparently. It to is very important. important. Yes, Eddie was my favorite character. I, we were talking about this early on. He really was... For me, he was, <laughs> I was following his story. Again, because I don't get to enjoy having cats. I have the dog who's hypoallergenic. And um, my mother had a Persian. And they have, again, they don't have fur. They have hair. So it's very particular for me. So I got to enjoy the cat. <laughs> oh, are we going back to the original Troll in the Dungeon? <laughs> yes. Yes, I saw Lady Gizmo was talking about being positive. Yes. We're here to talk about cozies and have a good time. Like, this is, this is why we're doing this. Exactly. Eddie was the reason why Minnie was found. Without Eddie, no one would have come to look at the sign. He was the one. He was the hero. He really was. I thought that was, uh, that was utterly adorable to me, that the cat was making enough noise to, to make them realize she was missing. And then the note, because the mother told her to do that, everything fell into place perfectly. The puzzle pieces came together. Exactly. 
Although I will admit, I can totally see Max, my little guy, my dog, who's right by my feet now because he keeps jumping up and down. I can totally see him being, Mom, you've been away too long. I'm just going to bark until you come back. <laughs> that, that would be very realistic. So it was mm -hmm. funny for me to think of a cat because obviously the noises and sounds are going to be different. So I was trying to picture how a cat would be frustrated and mad about their owner. So it did take, I mean, it was interesting to me. It was different, you know, reading experience. Yeah. Do you guys have anything else that you guys want us to talk about or anything with the book? I know that we've been going for about an hour now. I know. We really were kind of all over the place. <laughs> yes. I didn't write notes like I did last time because I read it earlier in the month. And so I was like, oh, I'm going to remember all of that. And then I was like, I, I don't remember all of it. I mean, I, I already talked about right. the killer. My biggest thing was I had no idea who the killer was. The, you know, I loved Eddie. Those are my biggest kind of comments. I also liked how the main character was realistic and relatable. Um, and again, we talked about the bookmobile. I just pulled up my, I have the, the Kindle Kindle version. Um, I don't know. I have the Kindle version too. It's actually what I read it on, even though I have the paperback, which I don't normally do. Um, but one night I my eyes were hurting and I didn't want to have the light on. And so I bought the Kindle version because my eyes were hurting and I wanted to still read. See, I, I was one of those people. I never, I was so against eBooks. I really, really was when they were first becoming a real thing. I just, I couldn't wrap that, my head around it. And then I think when I was probably either senior in high school or freshman in college, like that was when I started using the iPad more. And then I, again, I've slowly just gotten used to it and I've come to really use it now, um, especially that I've been working on my dissertation. Um, and so you're able to copy quotes and email them to yourself. So it's a, if it's a really long quote, you don't have to type it. You can just open it on the app and email it. So I find them so convenient now. <laughs> I feel spoiled. Is that how you were doing that thing earlier whenever you were quoting quotes? I email, uh, so if you guys yeah, I was up, wondering, I was like, oh my goodness, what is she doing? How am I going to do that? So I will tell you, I will, I will give you behind the scenes into how Angela operates. So if you guys haven't checked out our Twitter, um, I was posting comments and I got the idea because I was doing it for um, Romantics at Heart, the book club that I do with Nicole. I was doing this for Archer's Voice, which is the book we read for um, that one. We're talking about it next week. And so I was posting quotes. I'm like, I should be doing this. I should be doing this for our Cozy Mystery Book Club too. And so what I did was I highlighted my quotes and then I emailed them to myself. So they all went into that running email document on my Mac. So I would copy and paste them over. So I was keeping track of the ones that I read and that I tweeted them. So I had this running list of quotes that I should be tweeting. So I was having a lot of fun posting those earlier. So I was trying I, to, to keep you guys interested. Uh, so do you think that you would continue on with the series? So my rule is I always give the series two books. Normally, the first one's always going to be the starter of the um, the story, the characters, the side characters, everything like that. The second book is where I actually judge the series as a whole and how I'm really going to, um, if I'm going to continue on. So I do have the first four books in the series. I love um, that you bought them. Like you, were, you already invested your money in them. I did. I already invested my money in them. And so... I will read the second one 100%. I know it. And then if I still have like an inkling of what's going on, I need to know. I need to know. Then I will continue on and read the four that I have already. So I think you are, I think you're a little bit more forgiving than myself. Um, oh yeah, so they deleted the thumbs down. So yay, thank you. Everyone just be positive. Thumbs up. Um, I think you're a little bit more forgiving than myself. I mean, if you didn't get me the first time around, it's either... Um, you know, it's one of those fool me once <laughs> type of situations, like fool me once, shame on, you know, shame on, you know, I kind of just, I don't know. I don't, I mean, I don't know about the series in particular, but I'm just saying in general, if you don't get me with the first book, I'm probably not going to read the second, third. I think the first book has to be well done in order for me to maintain interest because I also have to really care about your characters if it's going to be a series. Um, I did notice, <laughs> I did notice this one, um, Again, um, I think I forgot who said it. I think it was Mad Hatted Reader. It was plot. Uh, it was character driven, not plot driven. The plot really didn't pick up until probably thirty five percent in. Because again, I had my little Kindle app here. Um, so again, I saw where you know the pacing was. So it was a, definitely a slower pickup for me. So um, I mean, 
mean, I liked the first book in the series, but it did take a little bit longer for me to get invested. I don't know if that's a fair assumption or if anybody else felt that way as well. Um, those that were asking, Ro asked, how do we see what book you are reading for the next club? So you really need to follow our Twitter. That's where we put the last week of the month. We always put, um, the next three choices that you can vote on and it's up for seven days. And the book that got picked for the month of March is a high end finish by Katie Carlisle and it's her fixer upper series. And it's, a. am really, really excited to read it. I have read one book by Katie Carlisle. It's her uh, if books could kill, it's a, um, a book binder, um, mystery series. And so I'm super excited to read it, but always, if you go to Twitter and type in cozy mystery club, um, everything will, will be there. And so, um, yeah, that's always where you would want to go. We have the, the whole entire Twitter all going and everything. And I was just pulling it up. I, I'm pretty sure. So this is also something I was going to mention. So the book that won, because again, we didn't know which book was going to win. Um, this one is actually a movie on Hallmark. So depending on when it airs next, we could always do a watch along as well if y'all are interested in that. But I was trying to pull it up. This is the one with Jewel, I think, the, the singer who has those, you know. Oh, yeah, that would be awesome. Um, see, Nicole, I agree. There was this one... Um, Kindle Unlimited series that I was reading and I actually read four of the books and I just kept waiting for it to get better. And finally I asked you guys um, on my YouTube channel, I was like, hey, so I've been in I've been reading this series for like four books. Should I continue? And all of you guys were like, Courtney, no, stop. Stop wasting your time. Go to another series. I can't believe you gave it four books. I mean, again, I think you're much more forgiving <laughs> than myself. If you don't have me, even with the first book, I always try and finish books that I start. I'm one of those people I hate not finishing a book. I have this compulsion and this drive to finish. I can't believe you gave it four books if you didn't like it. I did. I did because I kept going, oh, this has so much potential. This has so much potential. And then I kept waiting for the author to reach their potential and they didn't. Do I, do I want to know what books there are? I mean, do you, did you know the title or? Um, oh yeah. No, it was like, <sighs> let me look it up on my Goodreads because I did not rate them very well. Um, I rarely DNF books too, Nicole, but normally I, I pick out good books for myself. So I'm like, normally I don't, it doesn't bother me, but there, uh, there, there have been quite a few books that I, I DNF'd. Okay. It's the, the series is, um, the Harmony Cafe Cozy Mystery Series by Anna Lakewood. Um, the last book I read was Pumpkin Smoothie Murder and I rated it a two out of five. I know, see, I don't give anything, I don't even rate things on Goodreads anymore. I am a very interesting Goodreads participant, <laughs> depending on how things are going over there. I hardly ever rate books because I feel bad rating them because there are things like To Kill a Mockingbird, which are like five plus stars. I mean, I love it. But then there are other books that I really get into, like Archer's Voice. I'm like, well, it's not To Kill a Mockingbird, but like five stars. It's hard for me to rate books. I, I have, I have very, <laughs> I get very specific as well. Sometimes I'll be like 4.75 and there are people who don't even do the point, you know, five. And so I get very, very specific as well. It's, <laughs> it's a whole big process for me. Um, So for two stars, like I would never, I don't think I've actually given anything below three on Goodreads. So yeah. you do not like those books. Yeah, no, I've given, I've, I, you know, and it, and I'm normally a very generous star giver. Like I'm like, you know, maybe it wasn't for me, but somebody else would like it. Like that's my, like in my head, but those, I was just like, you know what? No, no, they're stupid and I don't like them. And they have so many plot holes and the characters are so just, they weren't, they weren't written very well. And I kept waiting for glory to come out and it didn't happen. <laughs> it gets a little, it, it, I very rarely do the 0.25 stars, but if, if, if it's like off by a hair, I don't do it that often. I mean, I do get very specific with like the 0.5s because I think there are people who don't even do that. So that's when I say specific, but um, <laughs> yeah, the 0.5 thing is a big downside of Goodreads. Yeah, people do like 0.5 movies, like three and a half stars, um, but yeah, I very rarely do it, but if something's just missing by a hair, that's when it comes into place for me, where it's just, I just can't give it that next star for some odd reason, 
And so mm -hmm. <laughs> one star bad, two is okay. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I knew you were very generous with stars. So as soon as you said that, I had that, whoa, she did not like this book. No, I did not. And I, I had actually created a whole entire rating system for Cozy Mysteries on specific things that I expect within a Cozy Mystery. But um, I never really shared it out with people because I didn't know if maybe I was just being like super weird because sometimes that happens. You're Sometimes people are weird and I don't know. I'm trying to find it because I actually... Where do you find your archives? Um, I usually, I don't use the Goodreads app on my phone. I always log in um, with my window on my computer. So mm -hmm. I don't know how the interface is different. Um, you did <laughs> you did remind me of something though, and I just totally lost it. Um, oh, the food, I, I just remembered. So the one thing that, that I noticed, and I, and I mentioned this in my um, Cozy Mystery book tag, because we did the tag that we created, I love Cozy Mysteries that have food in them. This did not have the baking element. No, I know. And baking elements are like my main jam. And I normally I'm like all for baking or crafting or sewing. I tend to be in a, into a lot of sewing themed cozies too. And um, this one, I, I was like, it goes with the bookish themed and it has an eminal and I love eminals. So yeah. How do you want to pronounce it again? How is that pronounced? Eminal. It has an eminal. I love you. You're so cute. It's an eminal. You get the. I was like, I want to do the cat voice again. But, oh, okay. So I, I used to, I created this one and I put it on my Instagram for like a minute and then I actually took it down. But I actually like to rate my cozy mysteries. Like, I don't know if you can see that, but um, I rate them by um, characters and, the, and they're all rated out of cat heads. Characters, the whodunit, the romance, the series, the punniness, and if it was fun. You just got Siri when you said series. <laughs> oh my goodness. Interesting. But that's what I that's what I rate. Like, and I also rate what cravings I have when I read a series, my favorite quote, and then my thoughts. So like cravings don't necessarily have to be food. I can crave like right now I'm in the third book in the um Kate Dyer, Seely's Pacific uh, or North Pacific Northwest Mystery Series, and I'm craving hiking right now, and like that's what I mean by cravings. I like how you developed your own personalized rating system. Um, I know you mentioned before you're not a big fan of romance and cozies, so is that a downside for you? So I'm okay if the romance builds over books and it is more logical in their they're falling in love. Like it builds. Um, other romances that I, I used to read all the time, like here's one of the romances that I have, Manhunting by Jennifer Crusey. Um, I own all of Jennifer Crusey's books and I've read them multiple times. Like my dog tore this up when she was a puppy like seven years ago. Um, yes, Nicole, I love a slow burn romance. If they're falling in love, in the first book and then they're having sex and then like everything's just there. Like I just, it's not realistic to me. And I, I just, I can't do it. I can't, I can't do it. It, it just won't happen. It's not realistic. I think it's, I think this is again, where the different genres come into play for cozy mysteries. It's much harder to balance a murder mystery, a romance, the family, the job. It's really hard to have all of the moving pieces. And so, again, I love Aurora Tea Garden. That's my go-to cozy mystery series. I've read it quite a few times. She doesn't end up with Martin right off the bat. He's not even in it until, I think, book two, book three. So, again, we have a buildup with that relationship. So I do, I do think the slow burn works very well for cozy mysteries. I agree. So. Uh Jo Joanna Marie, the baking makes me so hungry while reading because I imagine them being and looking so delicious. I could not agree more. Ro, insta love is never good in any genre. 
This is the well, problem when I watch cozy mysteries on Hallmark, especially the Hannah Swenson um, Murder She Bakes series, because she's a baker, and then they bake those cupcakes, and I have Georgetown Cupcakes and Sprinkles Bakery. I'm like, you guys are such a bad influence on me. You make me really want to go to these places right now. Mm-hmm. Very true. <laughs> 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 okay, but okay, so that's how I sort of felt when reading J.R. Ward's stuff. Nicole's a treasure. I love her. I, I yes. Everyone should follow her on every platform, everywhere. She <laughs> cracks me up. I love it. I love it. As I die. It's okay. <laughs> it's true, though. I'm, I am totally lost track of what we were talking about because that totally got me off guard. Yeah, I get the urge to start baking, but like I am not a cooker. I think this came up with um, Ellie Alexander in our last live stream. I get to live vicariously because I do not take the time to bake. <laughs> I am not a baker, so again, I get to experience it, you know, through the text. <laughs> J.R. Ward. J.R. Ward is, you know, again, if you like romance, you gotta you gotta read J.R. Ward. Mm -hmm. I read all J.R. Ward, Anita Blake, uh, Karen Marie Mounting. Um, yeah. See, I've read tons of romances and fantasies and, and stuff like that. I've just been, like, this whole entire bookshelf behind me is nothing but mystery. So the other parts, the other things you rate on, so you have the cravings, you have the love. Yes. Have I the have the how well the whodunit was written. So how would you rate this one? Because the, the whodunit for me took me by total, total surprise because that whole name change thing and the one detail where I was focused on. The thing the is, is that the aspects within the whodunit have to build to the fact that it's understandable at the end of the book. So with this whodunit, I would probably rate it a three out of five kitty cat heads. I love that rating system, especially Eddie and Kitty Cat. It works so now, well. Now, character-wise, Eddie would get a four out of the Kitty Cat heads, where Minnie would get a three out of the Kitty Cat heads. Ooh, the how, how did he get down? How did how was he not a five, and how is she not a how is she not higher? You gotta, oh, you gotta so quit. he's not a five yet because I'm just now learning about him, and I'm hoping that he grows as a Kitty Cat. Whereas Minnie, I think, is still a little bit immature in how she acts and how she thinks. And I still want to give her room to grow. So this um, is like a preemptive, low, like, set my expectations lower so they'll be higher in the next book. Is that the... Sort of. Because she could still be a three in the next book because she's just not cool enough. Um, Series-wise, I can't read a first book on the series. Then the romance, I'm going to say that that's non-applicable because... There wasn't really a romance within it because if I was to give he it, her. he kissed her. So there was a little, there was a little spot. I might give one kitty cat head. Um, punniness, I giggled a lot, so I'd probably give like a four kitty cat heads, and then fun to read, I'd give it a three. What would have given it the extra kitty cat? The fun, which acts, which aspect? The fun one, because I mean, again, I'll, the other ones. You know, I feel like they, the, the characters didn't play around as much as they could have with each other. Like, I feel like they they could have been more in depth with each other. Like, it was character driven, yes, but there were too many characters for me to really get a sense of the depth in which the characters could have been. So I, I do have a question because I'm curious how you and how our readers feel over here. What did you think about her talking to Eddie? Because I talked to Max quite a bit. I don't mind it, but I felt as if they used that, or um, I, Laurie really used that a lot in the book. So I'm curious how you interpreted that. Did you like it? Was that something that you were getting frustrated with? Was it just, what did you think of that? Because again, I talked to Max. I understand talking to your pet. I do it all the time. It makes complete sense. But she had that dialogue quite a bit. Yes, she did have it quite a bit. It made me realize that she needs more friends. Um, <laughs> <laughs> well, I talk to, like, I've got two cats and two dogs, and I talk to them all the time. I'm like, you know, you need to come pay your rent, because I call I call their cuddles and kisses rent, because they don't live, they're, they, they ain't no freeloaders. They have to give me cuddles and love in order to live in this house. And so, like, I talk to them all the time, but um, I do feel like Eddie progressed the storyline and plot because if he wouldn't have been there 
there would not have been a progression in the storyline. Because he took the place, I think I mentioned this before, he took the place of the, the sidekick character of the best friend, the roommate, the sister, the, the person who's usually their support yes. system when they do the, the sleuthing. It's mostly like she was talking to herself. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it was it was a unique dynamic to me that I haven't seen elsewhere. Aurora has her sister. Um, when you get into the Garage Sale Mystery Series, she has her family and her best friend, Danny, who she works with. Everybody usually has a person. <laughs> and so in this book, we had a cat. I don't know how everybody else interpreted that. But I've never seen that before in another cozy mystery series. So later no, have I, like in the uh, Sophie Kelly series right here, she has her two cats, Hercules and um, Owen. And they have a main part in the uh, in the sleuthing and things like that. But she doesn't, it's not as in-depth. Like, I love this series. I have eight of the books. How many are there in the series? I don't uh, remember. There are nine. The newest one just came out. It's a tale of two kitties, but it's in hardback, and I can't have it in hardback. I have to have it in paperback. Oh, we have very. <laughs> we're getting very specific now. <laughs> I have to have it in paperback. Um, Lori did use Eddie as a plot device. Eddie did move the plot forward. Uh, Miriam, I talk to my cat all the time, so I can't judge. Eddie is not an average cat. He seems like he's having much more to say than normal cats. I agree. He's he, He's got his own powerful personality. He he, had, he responded back. So I will be... So there was a comment up above. I saw it. Um, I didn't get a chance to respond, but when, when you mentioned, that, does the animal respond? Max, he does this little side-eye thing where he just looks sarcastic half of the time. He does not respond. He's not responsive in the way that Eddie is. Um, I thought that was really cute how he would... She would say, oh, he raised his eyebrow or he winked. He was actively participating and so that was a very again different experience <laughs> as the cat being you know responding to his master owner there um i also thought it was really really cute how she adopted him yes we talked about how she found him in the cemetery but i also thought it was really sweet how he was a rescue of sorts that because yeah, again i think that's something really scared cool. that he belonged to someone else like every time someone would say something he she should be like oh do you belong to him I, yeah, I mean, again, I think that was that was kind of a nice touch because it showed she really loved him and didn't want to lose him. And, uh, and again, it also showed her as a character of, well, if, she, if this cat does belong to you, I will have to give him up. So you got kind of a nice sense of her in a way with that as well. At least to me. Yes. Lizzie, there are other cat-themed cozies where I think this happens. In the Cat Who series, Coco is definitely a main character. And Quillerin, I like that name talks to him more than other people. And I think that that happens um, as well in the uh, this series right here by Allie Brandon, the Bookshop Mystery series. That happens a lot as well with Hamilton, um, another black kitty. I see that Ro has a black kitty too. Yes, mine is Cleo, and she is, she's the queen of the house, apparently. I love how we're complete opposites. You've got the black cat. I've got the completely white dog. <laughs> Just total polar opposites. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Polar opposites attract. <laughs> they were, I was going to say, uh, yeah, they were, you know, opposites work well together. Um, I, I also, so again, I really like the um, murder she baked with Hannah Swenson. And so she has Moisha, her pet cat. So again, Moisha is very much on the outskirts of the story, kind of comes in every so often. Very different. So it's kind of nice to see you, you recommend, and I'm definitely going to go back to the comments and write these down because I do want these recommendations. So if you have any more animal recommendations, tell me. <laughs> but it's nice to see the different narratives and cozies, you know, incorporating animals because I think the ones I've read thus far, animals aren't necessarily as involved or intricate to the plot. Um, mm -hmm. They're definitely more the pets, not the, um, the pet sidekick sleuth. <laughs> yeah, that's totally... Totally understandable. I've got, I think I might do a top five best, best animal sidekicks. We're inspiring videos tonight. We want the bookmobile. We want the vlog with that. Mm -hmm. You're going to have to, have you ever done a video explaining that rating system? Cause I don't think I've seen it. No, I have not. I, I need to do it though. I think that maybe people might, might like it. Okay. Yes. Curiosity <laughs> cat sitter. That sounds hilarious. I have not heard of that one. I've heard of Curiosity Thrilled the Cat because it's right here. Sophie Kelly has that one. Curiosity Thrilled the Cat. I know. If you guys have animal cozies where the animals are really important to the plot, I mean, 
I, it's going to be hard to beat Eddie. I think it's going to be hard to be a new Eddie. But if you guys have other ones, recommend them because I'm going to go through the comments later and pull these because I'm going to add them to my to be read list because I'm an animal lover. And again, I don't get to have the cat, so I want to live vicariously. So <laughs> tell me. I'd love to know your recommendations. Well, do you guys have any other questions or things that you want to talk about before the book club ends for this month? I know we will have, remember that um, the book for next month is, um, oh my goodness, I just, my brain, it had a fart, brain fart, hold on. Oh, it is a high-end finish. It's a Fixer Upper series by, um, uh, oh my gosh, Katie Carlisle. And I will look into the Hallmark movie airtimes if it is on the Hallmark Movies Mysteries channel or it's available somewhere, I will post on Twitter if we can maybe organize a watch along of some sort. Um, so be on the lookout over on our Twitter for that. <laughs> yes, and the next um, meeting will be on March 28th and it will be on my channel. Um, and I'll get the links and everything up for that. Uh, I see the comments coming in. Oh yeah, so I, I um, I I apologize. I will I will just throw this out there now. I've been catching up on social media over the last few days because I did my comprehensive exams last week. So I've been so far behind with videos and comments and people. But you are doing March Mystery Madness. I just I've been so out of it. I haven't been able to participate like I would have wanted to because I've been yes. frazzled. So with March Mystery Madness is amazing. Actually, in the comics comments, we have Lizzie from Lizzie Faye Loves Books. Her and Troy actually started the March Mystery Madness, and I was humbled and, and so excited to be asked to become a host for March Mystery Madness. And so it's a whole entire month of reading mysteries and of reading the different subgenres. Um, there are six different words that go along. I have a uh, March Mystery announcement video and TBR video on my channel. And so you can also go and follow um, the March Mystery Madness Twitter page. It's it's a lot of fun. There are so many amazing people that are a part of it. It's going to be fantastic. I saw it. So, again, I've been, you know, again, these PhD, you know, I got to go from being a student to a candidate. And so these exams took over my life this entire month. So I feel as if I'm just playing catch up now. And so when I saw that, I thought, oh, this looks like such a good idea. It looks like so much fun. So I felt badly that I haven't been able to participate up until now. But, you know, March is on the horizon. So we shall see. Oh, thank you. I, I really had fun designing the game board for March Mystery Madness. All of the uh, um, things that you see, the the little sleuthing woman and things like that, I, I had a lot of fun designing those. I know. You're in, 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 are, is this a spoiler if you say you're interested in graphic design? Is No, no. So I'm actually thinking about starting... Um, another another degree but in um uh, graphic design because everything that i've done i've learned um i've taught myself and so i thought that it would be really really fun this summer to check out a degree program for graphic design good night lady gizmo thank you so much for joining us i'm so sweet of you to come hang out and talk and you know enjoy clues and mysteries oh. <laughs> i know now i want to go see this clue board. i gotta go i gotta go look this up now yeah, I think it's the profile picture for the Goodreads group. I need to go, again, I've been so far behind. I got to catch up. All my videos were pre-filmed, so it looked like I was active, and I looked like I, and I felt like such a good little booktuber because I felt like I was so prepared for my right. exam. <laughs> um, but now I got to play catch up and go watch all of your videos. If you guys have been posting anything mystery related, you know, send it to the Twitter account DM, and I'll try and retweet it. March equals midterms. <laughs> well, so again, I'm a PhD student. Um, so this was, this was the, ex these are the exams. I did my written uh, essays um, last week and then next week <laughs> on Tuesday, <laughs> the morning of the live stream. So Nicole and I are doing the Romantics at Heart live stream Tuesday night. That morning I'm doing my oral defense. So Tuesday is gonna be a very busy day. Tuesday's gonna be a very busy day. Practice though. So I won't be able to join you guys for March Mystery Madness until probably the second week. <laughs> that is okay. All right. Good night, you guys. I hope that you guys have an amazing time reading the next book. And I can't wait to guys 
to see you guys posting on Instagram and on, on Twitter and everything for the Cozy Mystery Book Club. And if you guys are posting, make sure you use the hashtag because I found some of them by accident. <laughs> some people did not tag us or tag the club. And so I stumbled across the Lenin of Paw pictures, which were beautiful. And so make sure you tag us. I want to be able to retweet you and share your picture on my Instagram feed and stuff. So if you are doing that, tell us. I mean, we want to highlight your awesomeness. Yes, make sure that you let us know. Tag me at Courtagonist and then tag... Angela at Writer A Heart and we will we will retweet and repost because we're super excited that you guys are 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 hanging out with us and want to be friends with us and talk about cozies and stuff. I mean again, we were talking like this is a judgment free zone. <laughs> like we want to be able to, you know, this is a club. Like this isn't just us talking. Like if you guys want to participate, we want you to participate. If you want to if you want to participate, jump, be part of this. This is for everybody who loves cozies. So little little fun. Yeah. All right, guys. So I think that we are going to head out for the night. That was a, a nice hour and a half booking, talking and stuff. So good night, guys. Bye. Thank you so much for joining us and being a part of this live stream. You guys are so sweet and awesome. And seeing your comments just such a big smile on my face. I love this. And I love you guys. So have a wonderful night.